The Dragon That Sneezes by Owen Crane Out the red door and across the street, in the park where the people meet, there in the centre is a giant tree where lives a beast you would never believe. Not a bat, not a cat, not a skinny-tailed rat, not a louse, not a mouse, not a fat feathered grouse, not a bird with a bill like a spoon, not a bare-bottomed, red-faced, singing baboon. This creature's tail, at the very far tip, has a silvery hook that's exceedingly quick. It has razor-sharp teeth, so sharp that it's said they could bite through a lump of indestructible lead. On top of its head were two beady black eyes that rocked and rolled from side to side. From morning till night, in dark and light, hoping for a morsel, a taste of delight. And there it spied, from out the red door, three children who came to the park to explore. The children wandered throughout the park till the sun dipped down and it turned to dark. And then they saw the giant tree they simply must climb before they leave. From branch to twig they dashed up high, to the squirrels they saw they waved goodbye. Stop! came the sound of a bluebird's cry. You have to leave, you have to fly. Far away from here, it's not safe for you. The beast at the top will bite you in two. What beast at the top? the children replied. A terrible monster, fierce and wide. You must leave right now, go away at once, or this horrible beast will have you for lunch. Nonsense, shouted the children, will not be delayed, of this beast we're not afraid. In a minute the three reached the top, and there they found a pile of rocks. Quick, you must leave, go like the clappers, squawked the bird, his wings all a flapper. But it was too late. As quick as a flash came a silvery hook that flicked up the children before they could look. Over they span, through the air they sailed, landing smack in the middle of the monster's tail. What was this creature who's as large as a wagon? It was none other than a bright purple dragon. The starry-eyed girl clambered free of the dragon's tail and as quick as could be, she smacked the beast right on the nose. It howled and bellowed and there it froze. Then quick as a flash, it reached out its claws and the starry-eyed girl would punch it no more as the poor little girl, the eldest one, was lost down its throat and into its tum. The boy who dares had to go next. And in one swift move, he jumped up its neck. He jabbed its thumbs in the dragon's eye like he was sticking them in a blueberry pie. The dragon reared up with a fearsome look, swishing about with its silvery hook. Down came the jaw, snickety whack, and the boy who dares became a snack. The flame-haired boy had no one to defend. Upon his own wits, he had to depend. The dragon sat down and roared with laughter at the little boy in the midst of disaster. On its back, the dragon rolled, guffawing and snorting, quite out of control. Then the flame-haired boy developed a plan, so simple and brilliant, he reached out his hand. And he gave the tiniest tickle. The dragon roared louder and snorted out a pickle. The boy pressed on and tickled and tickled, and the dragon thrashed and giggled and giggled. Out of its nose came a torrent of lunch and the remnants of the beast's Saturday brunch. Eggs and ham rolls and jellyfish stew and mountains of pies it had forgotten to chew. Next was cheesecake and strawberry ice. Then came a pile of chocolate mice. Stop! yelled the dragon. In between laughs, never, cried the boy, and continued his craft of tickling the dragon and making it sneeze, partially digested smelly blue cheese. 
Then the food came to a pause, and over its face the beast clamped its claws. But the flame-haired boy kept going and going, and the beast's great belly kept on growing. Then all of a sudden, with a humongous bang, the beast knew exploded with a horrible clang. Bang! Out of each nostril came flying along the two missing children singing a song. We're free, we're free, let's run from this tree. Down they scampered and across the park, through their red door, leaving the dark. And a lesson learned is a lesson numbered. If you ever meet a dragon, you must remember. Tickle a dragon and it freezes. Because a tickled dragon does nothing but sneezes. The end. If you enjoyed this story, then subscribe to the channel and you will be notified every time a new story is released. Also, share it with your friends. Let people know about these stories. You can also get the ebooks on Amazon. Just search for Red Door Stories.